Hi, I'm David Earl, and welcome to Paramind. We're going to be going over some guitar-oriented stuff in Logic, starting with Guitar Amp, and then I'm also going to talk about Pedal Board. So I have here some Apple loops, some audio Apple loops of guitar. And there are two plugins that are really well suited to doing guitar effects. There's Pedal Board and Guitar Amp. I'm going to go over Guitar Amp first. Guitar Amp is actually a set of models of heads and cabinets that are used with guitars. And beyond the heads and the cabinets, they also have different microphones, different EQs and reverbs um, that can really take a guitar sound to the next level. I also use them for other stuff too. We'll talk about that later. So I'm gonna come over here to this channel strip and under audio effects, I'll choose amps and pedals and choose amp designer. So in the amp designer interface, basically we have the, cab the cabinet on the right with the microphone. When you hover over the cabinet, it shows you your microphone placement. And to the left, we have the head. So this is the amplifier, and then this is the speaker cabinet. So let's listen to what it sounds like when it's turned on and turned off. I'll use the power button. So you can see it, it immediately sounds cooler when we pop the cabinet on. It's very, very, like, all of a sudden we, we feel like it's a real instrument being played through a, uh, an amplifier. So then on the left here, we have model, amp, and cabinet. So this is one amp, and if I choose, say, large tweed combo, it not only switches the head, but it also sw uh, changes the cabinet that we're going to be using with it as well. So these are the combos. This is matching the cabinet with the head, okay? Now, if you want to have your own combination, then you come over to amp, and you might choose something like a large tweed amp, but then use the tweed 1x12 instead of the 4x12 to get a different sound. So let's listen to some of the different heads. I'll stay on this 4x10 cabinet. Actually, what I'll do is I'll use the combo so we can listen to the different, the different types. Now, what's really interesting about these models is the Apple team actually, for each combo and for each cabinet, for each amplifier, they did a separate model. And it's kind of unique that they do that. Uh, other companies, what they'll do is they'll create a sort of shell or a model shell, and then they'll tune it in different ways so that it sounds like the cabinet or the head that they're looking to emulate. But the Apple team, actually, each, each one of these are a different model, and so they all have a very different sound, which is very, very cool. As you go through the different amplifiers, it says Logic at the top of them, but you can feel fairly confident that the Tweed is going to be a Fender Tweed. Uh, if you look at the Blackface, it's probably going to be like a JC120 amplifier. These are definitely modeled after real-life amplifiers that are used in the industry on a regular basis. Now, when we come up to something like, uh, I'll go back to the large blackface combo. Actually, that's not what I want. I wanted the, uh, I'll do Blues Blaster. This is cool. So when you get to the head itself, we have the ability to change gain. If you drive the gain on this channel and pull the master back, that's how you get distortion sound. I can change the EQ to take some of the bass out. Now when I make these changes, if I switch the head, it's going to retain the same settings. Which is really handy when, you're, when you want that distortion, you want that much you know, input gain, you want to drive it like that, but you want to try different amplifiers. It's pretty handy. So let's see, which one do I want to use? I think I'm going to go back to the tweed, actually. I'm use a large tweed. Now, what a lot of people don't know when they're using this plugin is that you can choose different EQ types. So there's British Bright, Vintage, US Classic, Modern, and Boutique. And these are just different settings on the EQ, different slopes on the EQ, different um, crossover points. 
and um, they can change the sound quite drastically. So definitely experiment around with that. Next to that we have reverb, and these are all reverb types that are based off of reverbs you'd see in an amplifier. We have, they're all pretty much springs. So in an amplifier, a uh, guitar amplifier, they would have a spring that they would run the sound through. And if you've ever taken like a slinky, well, maybe that's just me who does stuff like this, but if you took a slinky across a room and you stretch it out and then you like yell at one end of it, you'll actually hear some resonance and you'll hear it kind of reverberate, sound reverberate through the spring. And that's what they did with these amplifiers so that you could have a reverb sound that was in a very compact area. So these are all the different types of springs that we have available to us. And you can choose the type here and then you can adjust your level. Next to that, we have a tremolo effect. You know, if you're going for like a Rage Against the Machine type sound, turn the depth all the way up, turn it to sync, and it'll sync with your song. Then we have Presence, which is essentially just a really bright um, EQ curve on the top end of the amplifier. And then we have our overall output master. So now let's go to the cabinet. If I listen to the, some of the different cabinets, you can hear just how much that affects the sound too. And people who are guitar players that really understand these amps and these cabinets will be thrilled um, to jump between these different cabinet types and really hear the difference between them and feel fairly comfortable in how they're going to make their amp and cabinet combinations to get the sound that they're used to. So four by 12 means four speakers and they're 12 inches, uh, they're 12 inches in diameter. If you have a one by 10, it's gonna be a single speaker, single 10 inch speaker. And then the brown face, vintage, all that stuff, those are just descriptions of these amplifiers. The people who have used these amps before kind of know what they are, these cabinets. They, they'll kind of know what they are. So I use vintage British. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm gonna use modern British. Yeah, I kind of like that. Gritty as hell. Turn the gain back a little bit. So now I come over here and I have our mic. So how do we want to place our mic? Right now I have a ribbon mic. The mic choices that we have are condenser 87, condenser 414, uh, dynamic 20, uh, dynamic 57. What, what do these mean? Well, condenser or dynamic is the type of mic that you're using. A dynamic microphone, um, is a basically what you have is you have a diaphragm over a little uh, a a uh, like a little spike that's going between two magnets and the way the diaphragm you know moves that thing between the magnets gets you your sound um, you have to get a lot of uh, a lot of juice from your preamp when you're sending that mic in but they're really good for recording things like amps because you can throw a lot of volume at them. Um, when they say 20 and 57 and 421, those are just blatantly calling out what kind of mic it is. And if you look at the if you look at the shape of the mic, like if we go to the Dynamic 20, that's definitely an RE20, Electrovoice Electrovoice RE20. That's an SM57 from Shure. That's a Sennheiser 421, and this is a 609. Then we have the Ribbon 121, which is like a Royer Ribbon. Condenser 414 is an AKG 414, and then the 87 is the Neumann U87. So these will radically alter the sound and their placement on the speaker will also change the sound quite a bit. So forward and back is air. That's how much air is being, you know, you're giving between the cabinet and the microphone. And then you'll note that the the dynamics the dynamic mics generally have a little bit more of a of a harsher sound, and the condenser mics will be a little bit softer and more balanced. Now, when you get closer to the cone, which is the center of the speaker, it tends to sound really bright. If you get off towards the edge, that takes some of the brightness away. And that's basically how amp designer works. Um, 
I highly recommend that you go through all of the different model types, go through all the amps, go through all the cabinets, um, get some source in there, and use it for other stuff besides just guitar. One thing that I like to do a lot is take a vocal and bus it to an auxiliary, put a guitar amp on it, something like this, like the Fender Tweed, and just mix it in ever so slightly. And what you end up with is a vocal that cuts more. It cuts through more and it has kind of a gritty quality to it that's, that's pretty neat. Um, highly recommend playing around with that. So I hope you like what you see. And uh, if you want to see more of these kind of videos, please subscribe to the Pure Mind channel. And I'm going to now talk about pedal board. All right, see you in a bit. Ciao.